What is going on everybody? I want to quickly talk to you about my first year of frugal living, all the mistakes that I made. So just so you guys kind of have like a clear aspect of what I'm talking about in 2017 was when I kind of started frugal living before I even knew what the heck that meant. And then again, late 2019. So we're gonna jump into the first year of it just so you can understand how I have evolved from then to now. And just to preface this video, I think frugal living is a great thing. I think everyone should have some sense of frugality about themselves when it comes to their money because life is expensive and you've gotta choose how you spend your money very, very wisely. But we're gonna talk about what not to do when it comes to frugal living, because there are a lot of mistakes to be made. And I'm here to save you from some frustration and mistakes that you might make down the road. So we're gonna jump straight into this. If you don't know who I am, I'm Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. And I'm the author of The Wealth Journey. We're gonna jump straight into this video right now. And also, real quick, real quick, before I get started, click the link in the description, get free weekly finance tips straight to your email inbox. Just click the link below. Anyway, we're gonna get straight into this video. So my first frugal living mistake, you might've guessed it. It was being too frugal. Yes, that is in fact a thing. When I tell you your boy used to straight up second guess getting like a bottle of water, that's how I was. And I'll, I've always, ever since I moved out of my parents' house, I've been making really good money, especially for my age group. And I would just penny pinch like crazy. I would penny pinch. I wouldn't really enjoy my paychecks. I didn't really have a lot of fun or enjoy myself, even in the littlest way. And I just found myself becoming deprived of some of the simplest forms of enjoyment in life, like getting a ice cold bottle of water. I love water, like that's all I drink. And I would just second guess that I would second guess getting like plates and bowls and forks, spoons, knives. Like, I was like, ah, that's expensive. I would second guess getting like a vacuum cleaner. Like these are obvious investments that you need for your household, right? To keep it clean and to like be able to eat off of things that you can wash without having to throw away all the freaking time. And I was always buying paper plates. I'm being dead serious with you guys. I'm just being honest with you, but I used to do stuff like that and I used to really procrastinate or hesitate in a major way when it came to buying things that were even slightly expensive. I really did now. And it just kind of took a toll on me. And it actually led into me just kind of going on a rampage and just being like, you know what? I said I wasn't eating out. I'm eating out every day now, <laughs> you know, I was, I was then going to the mall more. I was splurging on myself more. I was uh, spending money more freely because I kind of got to a point where it was like, you know what, why am I doing this? I'm not, I don't even have that much to show for this frugal behavior. What am I doing this for? So then it started getting me to a point where I was spending some money because I was like, I'm making good money and I'm making overtime. I better spend this money, you know what I'm saying? And so I kind of, kind of went out there a little bit. I never went too, too crazy, but what I'm saying is being so frugal put me to a point where I was literally bored with myself. I was like, oh, you're gonna spend some money today. So um, I had to learn from that. So that was my first mistake. Second mistake was focusing on being frugal without like a legit goal. I think if you're gonna be frugal, you need to have a goal and like a reason that you're being frugal. Like if you're just frugal for no reason and you're just putting all your extra money into your savings account, I think you're making a big, big mistake. Because my thing is this, when you're frugal, it's typically for a certain timeline for you to achieve a certain goal. I'm not saying you should be frugal today and then not be frugal tomorrow, but what I am saying is, if you're going to tighten up and get real strict about savings for say a month, two months, three months, you should probably have a goal behind it. Like either you're saving for a down payment on a house, you're saving to build your emergency fund, have more cushion in your savings account, you're saving to later invest that money. You have some sort of a goal, but if you do it for no reason, you're gonna to start to question yourself and be like, why am I doing this? And a lot of things you do in life will cause you to question yourself. For example, I get up at 6 a.m. every single day on my days off, because I have three to four days off per week, to go to the gym and work out. And there's some mornings where it's so freaking cold outside, it might be snowing, it might be raining, and I'm just like, Bro, why am I doing this? And I, I have to realize the more time I feed myself in that moment, the longer it's gonna take for me to get up and go to the gym. 
So the more time you feed yourself when you're living frugally, but you don't have like a specific goal or reason why, you're giving yourself reasons to question yourself. Why am I doing this? So don't give yourself a reason to question yourself. Give yourself a reason for being frugal. Think about your family. Think about who's important to you. Think about the goals that you have. Think about the lifestyle that you want. I didn't do that at first and I had to pay for it. You know what I'm saying? And that's just a part of life. But I'm extremely grateful that I can now take that and use it as advice to give to you. So the next mistake, which is probably the biggest mistake within this entire video, so pay close attention. I really want you to hear me when I say every single word. So listen very, very closely, right? I missed out on big opportunity costs, money that could have went into something that could have grew my money. I'm talking when I first started my frugal journey, I didn't have a Roth IRA. All I had was a 401k. I didn't really do any investing whatsoever. I was super skeptical about it. And people were saying, don't invest in the stock market. Don't invest in individual stocks. That is the biggest load of crap I've ever heard. And even if you don't want to invest in individual stocks, you could, in, you could invest into funds and grow your money just as much, if not more than investing in individual stocks. And I did not know that. And I really do regret, like people say they don't have any regrets. I do. <laughs> I definitely do. If I would have made certain decisions just a few short years ago, like five, six years ago, I would be, my net worth would probably be double or triple what it is right now. Facts. But that just goes to show that hindsight is 2020 in this case. But we really need to start thinking about, as a people, we need to start thinking about what our opportunity cost is. Because why are you being so frugal to hold on to so much money as possible if you're not making decisions to then make that money grow as much as possible? There should be a portion of money going into savings. And like I call it a liquidity fund where you can easily get to your money if you need it like today, you can pull out of your savings account, boom, because there's an emergency that happened. Or you have an emergency fund and a savings account and a second emergency fund or however you want your finances to be set up. That's cool. But there should also be another portion where your money is invested. You should dedicate a percentage of your money to be invested to grow. Because you do it for your job, you probably have a 401k, a 403b, something, right? Where you automatically save a certain amount of money, except you're not really saving it in an account that doesn't grow. You're saving it and you're putting it into the stock market, which is growing your money. So why wouldn't you have another account for yourself that you could put money in. You could even put more than you put in your 401k. And what you could see is you could double, triple, quadruple what your net worth would be after retirement. So you're not just relying on one fund to retire off of. To me, that's the definition of being frugal. You're saying, I'm making decisions now to be as far along as I can be in the future to take care of myself and my family. It's really cool and commendable if you can save 70 grand, 100 grand, but realistically, how long is that gonna take care of you and your family? But if over the years you invest 70 to 100 grand, it's not gonna just stay at 70 to 100 grand. It's gonna definitely grow and it's gonna multiply. Make sure you pay attention to my investment videos. They're coming full force and you're gonna absolutely love them. And I have a course coming out soon that's gonna really show you the meat and potatoes of investing and how to get started and do so with confidence. So that's coming. Shameless plug. Anyway, moving on. Another mistake that I made in my first year of frugal living was I was so focused on the small things and I was so detached from the big things. So let me explain. I used to read those articles that's like, yeah, take surveys on Amazon. I really used to be grinding after work, taking surveys on Amazon to get me a little, little something, something like a dollar per every 20 minutes that I was, I was really out here hustling. And sometimes it would be 25 minutes for $5. And sometimes I would get $10, but I wouldn't make that much. And really when I calculated it, it was not worth the amount of time I had to spend to get that money. Five minute surveys get like 20 cents, get like a dollar. It's like, bro, <laughs> that was that was a crazy time. I was focusing on how I could increase my income, but in the smallest way possible. But I was also thinking about how I could save my money, but in the smallest way possible. So those articles I was just talking to you about, it would be like, cut back on the Starbucks. Okay, newsflash, I'm not a Starbucks drinker. I don't really drink coffee like that. 
never really been a big deal to me. Sometimes I do if I need it, but like it's not a habit that I've done every day, except for when I was in college. But anyway, I was like, okay, well that means I need to stop buying snacks at the vending machine at work. That's, that's what will get me to wealth. That's what's gonna build my income. Stop buying snacks at the vending machine at work. Yes, that's what it is. I'm gonna stop going to McDonald's. I'm gonna stop going to Chick-fil-A. I'm gonna stop going to Burger King. I'm gonna stop going to Cookout. I'm gonna stop going everywhere because that's what's gonna get me to where I need to be. I'm gonna drive as little as possible because that's gonna save me so much on gas. Keep in mind, back in 2017, gas was like $2 and some change for the <laughs> per gallon, right? And I already had an economy car, so I really wasn't saving that much. Keep in mind, I was making good money and I was making a ton in overtime. I was making like 20 grand more than what my actual salary was supposed to be at that time based off of just purely overtime. So that's what I'm talking about. I didn't focus on the fact that I was spending about $150 to $200 more than I should have been spending on rent because I could have just got a single bedroom instead of a big townhouse. I didn't think about that. No, I didn't think about that. I didn't think about how I was habitually buying things that I didn't need, that I thought I needed. So, so with that said, like I want you to think about what are the big things that you buy that you think you need that you really don't need? Like maybe for you it's a car note and you're paying way more a month than you should be paying for it and you know it's a depreciating asset and you're like, man, this is a nice car, but I'm sp it's, it's costing me 700 freaking dollars a month. $500 a month, what can I do with that extra? These are focusing on the big things and not focusing and not focusing on the small thing. Why are you focused on how many times you go on McDonald's when you already know good and well you're spending like 500 freaking dollars a month on a car that maybe you shouldn't be spending $500 a month on? That's just an example. You might love your car and you might feel like it's a necessary expense. Cool, what is your unnecessary expense? That's what I had to ask myself. And once I got clear on that, I started making some adjustments and I started, you know, having a clearer vision about what I'm going to do going forward in life. Because I did, I did end up moving, you know, across the country to a different state. And I was like, this time I'm not getting a townhouse because, of course, I was looking at townhouses when I first was thinking about coming out here to Nevada. And I was like, man, let me go ahead and get the single bedroom. I learned from my mistakes. And you know what? I'm able to put away a lot of money because of it. So you have to think about the pros and the cons of each financial decisions you make, no matter how big or small, but focus more on the big things. The small things do matter because they do add up, but they're not nearly as important as the big things. Let me just say that. Number five, I was kind of being too hard on myself about what it meant to live frugally. And I used to <laughs> talk to myself like, bro, why are you doing this? Why are you making this purchase, man? You know you don't need this. What you doing? Wasting your money need to save it. And it just goes back to all four of the mistakes that I was just talking about. It's kind of all of them combined. Because of all of those things pre-existed as mistakes, I was already talking to myself like, why are you doing this, man? Based off of what I thought I knew, I was giving myself negative self-talk basically to discourage myself from making what I thought were mistakes like enjoying myself or or enjoying some leisure time that I rightfully earned from you know grinding and working so hard to earn my money you know and I wouldn't allow myself to to do certain things and to have certain experiences because I was like well you don't need to be doing all of that. Sure, I went to the occasional football game where I went out with friends and stuff like that, but that was rare and it was like pulling teeth to talk myself into doing that type of stuff. So if I give you any message in this video, find the balance between living frugally, enjoying life, and just being smart with your money in general because you work hard for your money, you deserve some type of reward for what you do. Just don't go overboard. Don't go overboard with saving. Don't go overboard with spending. It's a fine balance that it took me a few years to learn. And you know, I'm still learning every single day in the realm of personal finances, even though I talk about it and teach about it a lot on this channel, I'm still learning every single day. And the biggest lesson that I learned out of all these mistakes is there is a gigantic opportunity cost, not just in terms of fun, enjoyment, leisure time and stuff like that, but no, nah, there's 
legit like opportunity cost and how much money can be made from the money that you do save it shouldn't all your energy shouldn't be just focused on saving and i get if you're skeptical about investing learn about investing it's free to watch a video about investing it's free to read a few articles on investopedia about investing then you can graduate to books and start really learning the the nuts and bolts and get to meet some potatoes of invest but there is no frugal living without thinking about the future and if you're going to tell me that you refuse to invest and you're just closed-minded about investing in general you're going to be missing out on a gold mine opportunity we've had a few stock market crashes in these past just couple of years 2020 and 2022 and we could have taken so much advantage of the stock prices being down. They're still down right now, by the way, but we don't know when stocks are going to get this low again. You just have to ask yourself if you can afford to not invest now when you imagine that you could 10 extra money in the future, just 10, 20 years from now. And that may seem like a long time, but time's going to go by anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you might as well have your money in something, basically in a time machine that puts it in a position to multiply and grow over time. That's all I'm saying to you, and that's all I'd recommend, and those are the mistakes that I made in my frugal living journey within the first year. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.